This is diffuse lung disease number five, prepared by Prof. Sharaf and revised by Prof. Yusriya Sabri. Now we will talk about the interstitial lung diseases of non etiology. Still, we are doing those of non etiology, and we said that these include the pneumoconiosis, the extrinsic allergic alveolitis, and drug induced. Then still there is a group of diseases that are usually acute and here, here we can say the acute group of interstitial lung disease which is PCP, cytomegalovirus and mycoplasma. Acute lung disease in, in, in the immunocompromised patients are four. Besides those three we have said, the BCB, the pneumonias, cytomegalic virus, invasive aspergillosis, include also septic emboli. Pneumocytis carinae pneumonia or pneumocystis pneumonia is usually, most of them share the, the presence of bilateral batchy but more commonly diffuse ground glass appearance mainly in the PCB it is mainly upper lower or central this group of patients of PCB are usually more common in AIDS and you can see the consolidation sometimes thin walled cysts as the name implies nomocystis pneumothorax may be there Reticulations, that means the exudative phase is resolving. Bronchiectasis and bronchiectasis or bronchiectasis, bronchiectasis may occur due to traction. Lymphadenopathy and pleural reaction can occur. So it is more common in AIDS. It's more common it is bilateral ground glass appearance with small cysts with pneumothorax, with reticulation, as other interstitial disease. It is an acute interstitial disease. Here it is. Diffuse ground, bilateral ground glass appearance with small cysts and small bronchiectasis and bronchiectasis. And if resolving, it will leave, it will, uh, uh, leave some reticulations. The differential here is between BCB and spastomegalovirus. Of course, there is and pulmonary hemorrhage. Of course, there is an abscess, which is an accidental finding. But but the presence of abscess in this area means immune compromised patient. So we have the BCB and cytomegalovirus, and the possibility of pulmonary hemorrhage. hemorrhage in a case with abscess. Acute interstitial disease, as we said, includes the BCB, the cytomegalovirus, uh, uh, the mycoplasms, and septic emboli. Here, acute interstitial disease is due to viral, cytomegalovirus, It, it, it presents again bilateral ground glass but with more reticulations resulting in bilateral interstitial but small in the mid and lower zones. The cause is differential pulmonary edema, viral pneumonia as cytomegalovirus, BCB, mycoplasm drug reaction and the RDS. This is an acute interstitial disease. An appearance of acute interstitial disease. Cytomegalovirus ok, 
occurs in AIDS, the same like as BCP. Again, bilateral ground glass appearance and increased parenchymal density. Alveolar or millary associated with all types of radiculations. So this is a differential diagnosis of acute interstitial pneumonia, cytomegalovirus, PCP, and mycoplasm, which, which presents viral-like. Viral In patients with uh, AIDS, or sometimes in patients with ARDS, the same appearances may overlap. Pulmonary edema is an acute interstitial disease. Um, in, within the uh, 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 phase, we can find after the upper loop vessels catalyzation and the septal lines and thick interval fissures. We can find that septal lines are more prominent and appears as reticulation, and this is an acute interstitial disease. Amongst the causes is pulmonary edema, but don't forget that you have a list of acute dangerous interstitial disease, PCP, cytomegalovirus, and mycoplasm, drug reaction, ARDS. This is the appearance of pulmonary edema, sparing the periphery and basal regions and ABCs. Bilateral ground glass appearance. Hantavirus is another one associated with acute respiratory stress syndrome and giving the same appearances but more, more, more severe and more central. Uh, sorry, are more peripheral than to be central. In ARDS, it is more peripheral, while in Hanta, it is more central. Bilateral ground glass appearance. Adult respiratory stress syndrome, increased lung vascular permeability, resulting in pulmonary edema and pulmonary damage. Sepsis, aspiration, inhalation, trauma, near to drowning, drugs. It's acute interstitial disease. Earliest abnormality is very higher interstitial edema, which progress to form diffuse confluent opacities. Evaluate for barotrauma effect as pneumothorax or pneumodiastinum can occur. Of course, materialization with hemocytosis can give interstitial, interstitial disease of acute onset, acute interstitial disease, which can be resolved. Good Pasteur syndrome, or the anti-glomerular basement membrane disease, in which you can find Hemorrhages, pulmonary hemorrhages, fibrosis associated with renal failure. Pulmonary hemorrhages, fibrosis. This fibrosis, of course, will proceed to be more reticulations and to be honeycombing. Thank you.